to direct it. Yeah, the former Cardiff Blues man thrives on those firm grounds. The Welsh international has plenty of vision and he's kept much of his flair and acceleration. Fleet of foot and mine, he orchestrates Bristol's impressive attacking game. There is no more important part of this Bristol team. Our refuse Luke Pearce is the referee. The tables at this time of the season rarely lie, but this Green King IPA Championship table really is telling the truth, isn't it? The top four, the best four by some distance, all Thank already you. into the playoffs. Come jostling on, this weekend is one plays two, three plays four to determine who those semi finals will be against and who will go into those semi finals in the best frame of mind. Many believe this will be the final itself. If it is to be, then it certainly adds even more spice tonight, but it ain't done yet, not by a long way. Early ball then for the home side. And here's Baldwin, out to Robinson. Sorensen took it and it didn't go forward. Tongawir coming through. And Free is playing advantage here to Bristol. That was Lawrence who drove, but they are a nuisance around the breakdown London Welsh. They've shown that all season, but too much of a nuisance there for referee Pierce. Now Bristol have been going from Christmas just about all the time into the corner, tapping. They have not been going for three-point penalties. Andy Robinson is of the belief that why go for three points that you can go for five or seven? It's very much what Bristol have been doing all season. Some teams, some opponents have said it's disrespectful, but Robinson's view is very much along the lines of we're here to score points. The more points you score, the more you win. They've been positive all season. They've started positive here. Promise that he wouldn't change. Sticking to this tactic, and look at that for an early attacking position here as Lawrence prepares to throw. Well down by Dream. now it's Robinson, oh that's a strong run from Moses. Could well be the right decision here if Bristol can leave with an early try. Here is this early test for this London Welsh defence, Robinson again, Tuffy getting his chance to start tonight and looking to seize it with the really, really big games to come, but this is feeling big here as Costa took it on and trying to wriggle underneath there, Bristol. And the referee's going to have a close look at this. Yes, go ahead. Is that Edie on the floor? Slick start from Bristol. Really good initial line out off the top. Moss is straight over the gain line. They're playing with pace. Of course he has. And that's making it very hard for London Welsh's excellent defence to stop them. To beat this Bristol team, you have got to take the momentum out of their game. And at the moment, that's not happening. Now, Edie going for the line. He's well short there. Uh, again, I'll, I'll say that. You do need to see that in real time, you know, because that's... In real time, that could be a try. It could be a man holding on to the ball too long, and it could be a penalty. It's... He's allowed to place it. Yeah. He's got to place it immediately. But immediately. Has he actually got the, to the line first time, or does he just roll it on? Yeah, he, he places it, and the question is, does he place it and then get there? <laughs> Referee having a look at our studio monitor. Jeff Warren, of course, in the television truck. You there, Jeff? Well, he is there, but the referee can't make the communication link at the moment. Okay. Um, Jack, I think he's trying to talk to me, but I can't hear anything. Can you pass the message on, please? Lee, can you get all the comms guys? Luke, it's Jeff. Can you hear me? Yeah, I've got you. Thanks, Jeff. I have a report. Yeah, go ahead. Luke, it's a double movement, yeah. so therefore it's a penalty defending side. Thank you. No try. Double movement. So the communication Thanks, established and Jeff Double Warren movement. 
decides that Mitch Eady was holding on. A initial view, it did look like that. He put the placement down and it was short, and then he just couldn't resist rolling it further. But even though that's a reprieve for Welsh early, it's a very good start for Bristol. Still might be with the this touch. Here's Watkins. Off to the Cardiff Blues next season. Will be a loss for Bristol. Joint top try scorer in this league. Good link work there from Glynn. Baldwin, the former Saracen, Robinson to Marco Mama. Recovered from a rib injury. And called in because Ross Rennie has an ankle problem. He tested before the match, but it didn't come through that test. Ben Mosses again. Two tries in a win up at Rotherham at the start of March. It's a good drive. <laughs> Look at the delight there, or listen to the delight, I should say, from uh, London Welsh. Absolutely chuffed with that. Brilliant line out here from Bristol very on, very early on. And Moss is straight over it. Glynn wins superb ball there. London Welsh have to stop that. And I think, Will, one of the keys for the Welsh is to slow it down so that Nicky Robertson can't play as flat as he is at the moment. Uh, absolutely, he's as flat as a pancake. Off the top of that line-out, he was right on the five-metre line. The line-out was taken there every single time. He's getting quick ball round the corner. And that first turnover there, that mall turnover, is the first time Welsh really have stopped them on that game line. But Robinson at the moment enjoying himself on the front foot. But further evidence there at the breakdown, just what London Welsh can do. Oh, lads, Very when you're ready. In that area, also okay, powerful. Three, make sure you're not on the arm. In One, this area. Take that arm away. Okay. The scrum. Good stability. stability. Organised as well, aren't they? Here in the loose. You know, I think Bristol will want to keep some width on this game, try and commit some men, but then get ball out to Watkins. Mosses is a very clever player, but they don't want to be running hard Fine. and fast all the time into Welsh Sucks. around those fringes where they do hold you up so well. I need you straight, not on the angle. And those London I need Welsh you straight, forwards not win on the a penalty. Drive straight is the instruction from the referee. Cortez, Argentina international. This was other prop tonight. James Hall who returns to the side. Another man in their squad with Premiership experience, ex-Newcastle, of course. <coughs> but they were done. That scrum, particularly Cortez, as you can see, went in on the angle, sets himself up and <laughs> just <laughs> continues on 45 degrees. That's one of the easier calls there for Luke Pierce. That uh, It started illegal and it got worse. Gaston Cortez there, not very subtle. And this time... London Wells do find touch. Good kick from Davis. Nathan Vella to throw in. He's been out for four weeks. So a timely return and a lovely throw as well. Off the top ball, one by Brown. The duel was coming off that wing. It's been knocked on, but he really was arriving at pace with power. Scored a cracker against Jersey last week. In fact, London Scottish recently as well. Scored another beauty. He can cause damage. Um, yeah, he's, he's quick, isn't he? And like a lot of wingers, he's very comfortable coming off his wing. Super Brown, Daniel Brown at the back. That is really good ball. It gets you into the middle straight away. Trying to get a Azua in. And it's just the hand there, the right hand of Moss. It takes the ball from the wing as he's hammering in through the middle. Going to be better from Cortez, referee taking a good look. A similar sort of angle, but it seemed to be a, a bit of both there, judged by the referee. Advantage, kicking the ball out of the hands. So here's a penalty coming, and it's taken quickly by Baldwin, and he's away here. Finds Watkins on the outside. Oh, that's good strength from the winger. Baldwin with a quick tap and go, gets them moving again as he serves Robinson. Once more Robinson to Mozes and then Tovey 
Yeah, we'll see. Local boy. That's not gone anywhere. It's another knock on. Mm. Plenty of attacking intent here from Bristol. Ten. Ten. Again, they get penalties. They just want to maintain the pace of the game all the time, and Baldwin is doing that. And Watkins, very strong in the hip. It's a good balance runner, isn't he? Powerful burst there. And again, Welsh being tested on the back foot. Low to the ground. Quick ball. Just trying to keep the defence from organising itself. A slow game is a friend to a defensive line. Bristol win tonight. Don't, don't stand up on your inner court. Okay. We'll just secure ears, top ears, spot. Final fixtures. Bristol go to London please. Scottish. Not easy. London Welsh will testify to that. Welsh, they're at home to Nottingham in their final game. Yes, you are. Yeah. Crutch! Bristol on 86 points. London Welsh on 82 Five. at the start of the night. Six. He's in Rotherham, both on 75, and tomorrow, of course, up comes Nathan Vella, referee again. Might have turned a little bit of a blind eye to that one. And Seb Stegman, former Harlequins winger, and there's Alex Davis, now finding himself at fly half. Has played full-back, played scrum half in the Premiership as well, very versatile player then, but yeah. settled into this outside half roll now and also the kicking roll for a good few weeks off the kicking tee hang on you get on wait excuse me if you get on your mark i'll ask the numbers okay yeah absolutely. thanks there we are clear numbers there's lawrence to throw down from Edie. good pass again from robinson Open invitation for his centres to come onto that ball with pace and power. It's been slowed down again by London Welsh, and they thought they were turning it over, but the referee said their work had been illegal. Well, Baldwin is looking to go quickly, but what was important there was that London Welsh slowed it down. You could see Tom Bristow's big hands on the loose head just saying you're not going quickly. But once again, it's nil-nil. And Nicky Robinson, I don't think he's going for post. He's not. It's relentless. It's the tempo that Bristol have played at all season. And they've been used to getting fast starts on the scoreboard because of it. Not tonight. They haven't got the points to show for it, but they are not veering from their plan. Uh, not the most ambitious kick from Nicky Robinson. You feel that if a team does turn down points, as Andy Robinson's inside will do, then there's a gamble involved, and the gamble does mean that your kicker has to go for the corner a little bit more than we saw from Nicky Robinson there, but still, the line-out has been pretty good thus far. Nice take by Glenn. And there's Marco Mama holding it in. Brought to the floor, but still sets it back for Baldwin, who knows the ball is there, but he just has to sort out those... London Welsh foragers and it's stolen by Vela. Kiwi's done well there. There's another, Tyson Keats. And another in Daniel Brown. And Hudson Tongawe. Keats back in position. Take it in. Stop there, Red. Stop, Red. Stop. Davis with the kick. That's good. And he gets quite a nice break from in the end. And away from Andy Short. This one is, hey, hold on. I'll check where I want to check, OK? You can't talk to me like that. Very interesting earlier in the game. Decoys being used all over the place from London Welsh. Midfield ball, you can see the man held, and now if we just pause it here, what you see is a great big line, and if Azua can hold that ball, he really is in a great position there. One decoy man coming hard from out to in, fixes the men, next man comes again almost. More. Plenty of variation at the line out from Bristol. That was Sorensen this time. Robinson is hoping the man will be there. One of those no look passes. Nearly worked. 
case of nearly so far from Bristol, isn't it? Just not quite getting their game going to the point where they can show the benefit on the board for all this possession. Well, if you go back again and look at that again, Mosses, the inside centre, runs a lovely little decoy line just before that happens, and that holds them. And then the handling not quite good enough, but very close. Very close indeed. Talked about London Welsh and their ability to try and fix men. Well, Bristol trying to do that there. And again, it was Mosses coming from out to in and just holding London, London Welsh. Fascinating to watch those penalties. That penalty is bang in front of the post, about 30 out. He said to, to kick to the touchline here is really difficult one to get close. I just wonder, is Andy Robinson keeping his cards close to his chest when he gets to the semi-final, when he gets to that final, if he gets there and they get in the two legs, those three pointers, surely he'll change tack, bang the threes over, build the score, four sides to chase you. You don't get bonus points, do you, when you get to the knockouts in the championship well you're turning cut rugby upside down if you do I totally agree with Will I, I would be astonished if Bristol did it but they have been almost missionary like in their zeal to play attacking rugby this one goes the way of the Bristol front row Mr Cortez will feel very happy with that Baldwin, Robbins, Costa finding himself in midfield. He's got good hands and he finds Slowick. And the youngster, just 20 years of age, coming into the side today because Jack Wallace pulled out injured. There's Watkins, 16 tries this season in the championship. Marco Mama. Sorensen. That really is a pick and go. Not sure he needed all his fingers there to do that. His big hand came out. Here's Edie. Brushing off Tom Gouir, and that's not easy. Davis gave it a go, but it's a good carry from the number eight. Now it's Robinson. Watkins can't take it, but he falls for Tuvey. Tuvey gets support from Costa. That's lovely off the floor there from Costa. The scramble from London Welsh is good again. It's fascinating. Bristol want to play at 100 miles an hour. They're getting some penalties. London Welsh want to slow them down. They want to get them in the inside lane. Penalty given here. Look at Baldwin, his left hand there. He wants that ball from Daniel Brown. But watch Brown now. It's in his left hand. You're not getting that quickly. And away, he just stepped back so quickly. Baldwin wants it all the time. He wants pace. London Welsh, they want to take the pace away from it. Take the heat out of it. Exit Northampton, Bath, Leeds, of course. Daniel Brown, also Grenoble, where he's had a couple of spells. Said to a Kiwi earlier, he's, of course, Irish qualified. He's done the rounds in European rugby, hasn't he? As you say, a couple of stints at Grenoble. Played some fine rugby for Northampton and was a really useful addition, I think, in a transitional period for Bristol's dearest and nearest rivals, Bath. Did well there. Set. Well, they've swung this right around at the scrum. Whether they go for the post is a different matter, but the... Uh, Forwards are certainly setting it up. Hey, you prop and I'll referee it, please. Warning there for James Hall just to button it up after having won the penalty. Well, in the context of game management and winning games, you have to start converting these into scores because two or three very kickable penalties have been turned down. So they're actually due now a 5-7 pointer to actually make up for the chances missed. But this is where the London Wolves defence comes in. Do feel, though, they will have to crack at some point. Such is the territory, such is the possession, and such is the power here from that Bristol 8. But again, London Welsh find a way. 
Corker just flew in again there to stop it getting any momentum. That's Edie. Vela not really rolling away, was he? Robinson, he stopped in his tracks. The grit and determination here from London Welsh is shining through, and that's Will Spencer who's picked up the ball and brings it away. It's another attack that has been snuffed out. It's another psychological win, in a way, for London Welsh. Well, I know what Bristol are trying to do, but there is an old saying, you know, defences can stop you when you run at them, but when you're kicking penalties, nobody can stop that ball going through the post, and, and Bristol really should be 6 9 nil up, but I guess they're thinking long-term. They would be saying, well, that's a short-term view. We are going to work this London Irish defence so hard until they crack. The flip side of that, of course, and, you know, there's never a black or white. The flip side is Bristol could be six or nine points up at the moment. I agree we will. It'll be fascinating when we get to the playoff to see whether Bristol continue playing that way. Same with you, Welsh, please. Formation, OK? And within defensive, within a team organisation, that man has been huge up the, up the middle and Stegman has been brilliant out in the wide channels. Well, Stegman's going to have a chase here. And it's a good one. Back That's it comes to Keats really? and suddenly London Welsh have a chance to show what they can do in attack. Hudson Tonga to Tom May. Captain travelling well there. Keats again, that's a good line. Matt Corker. Keats caught in possession. Turnover ball, Robinson, chance for Cortez. Slowing. Baldwin, Robinson. Really starting to open up now. Both oh, sides giving good. it a go. Lovely play there by Costa. There's Mosses travelling well, ball in two hands, and then he has to confront a duo. But look at the ground that he made. Here goes Hall. Baldwin. And Robinson. Tom May is struggling. And he's going to get some treatment now. Very frenetic at the moment. London Irish, London Welsh and Bristol both conceding a lot of penalties. A lovely touch of play from Nick Costa. I know Andy Robinson thinks the South African is a very good player. Played for the Stormers. Beautiful footwork and timing on this pass here. The, you know, a Premiership centre would be proud of this. Turnover ball. We go one way and now as we come back, Costa... Very comfortable in the midfield. I think he takes a ball off Nick Robinson here. Fix in, out, delay. Ah, oh, that's a lovely piece of play. Signed after a loan spell. It was all sealed in March from Bath, South African, born in Robertson. So wine country. Is it neck or is it head? I, I is know, it well, Francois Lowe, who you could argue is probably... Whew, this this season, the leading open side in the world, he's been playing brilliantly. He would have appreciated that play there from Costa. I know Andy Robinson, when Bath decided that Bristol could have him and it wasn't a matter of dual registration, was very pleased with that piece of business. Get on a three, please. He wouldn't mind Francois Lowe as well, I guess. Tom May still down, so not part of this. So worry this for London Welsh. As Carl Kerwin takes it on the back of that line out. Hudson Tongui trying to get himself not just match fit, but match sharp. Good catch from Augie Slowick. Now he's back on his feet, he's in the left wing position. And his side get the turnover ball. They're on top of the turnovers, aren't they, at the moment, London was. When that ball goes into claustrophobic areas, it ain't coming out. Come on, 
hold on. No way. Sorry, my fault, lads. It was from a kick. It's a Bristol. Well, let's have a little chat with the well, London Welsh coach. It was, from a, it was from a kick. Player coach Bristol Gordon Scott. Ross. Oh, Evening, sorry, Gordon. Fault, What's your take on the first 21 minutes? Uh, it's been quite scrappy from us so far. We've given away far too many penalties. Obviously, recently uh, Bristol have really smashed teams up in the first 20. So it's good from that point of view. We've, we've stopped them from scoring, but we've had two half opportunities, and sadly we've not taken them. Bit of a heart in mouth moment there as Tom May was injured, but he looks okay. Yeah, he's a tough old warrior, you know, he's getting quite old now, he probably just wanted a rest. Yeah, very important man for you. Thanks, Gordon. No problem. Ball went to Robinson, his Tuffy. Now, he's got a lot of space here, May would normally have closed that down. He may be just feeling the effects of the injury. Well, he's waving his arms about, though, suggests that he's OK now. That was a really good scrum from Bristol. It gave Nicky Robinson so much licence to get flat and put width on it again. It's quick ball for the half-backs. Cortez is not looking any straighter in his drive, though, has to be said, but it's working now for the home side. Well taken by Mama. This is Watkins. I think that Charlie Ainsbury is also part of this squad. David Lemmy comes in next season, but Watkins goes. Oh, how and many? Real strength and depth in this position already. Bristol. Well, the turnover. I mean, the, the, the tally of turnovers is, is astonishing in the first 22 minutes. I think every time that ball is going in, the, the free kick or the, or the scrum is going the way of London Welsh. They're doing superbly. And two. Two of those small turnovers have been down to Tom May. Just can't overemphasize, overemphasize the importance of him. Gordon Ross has been watching, making sure he's fit. He's really running this defensive show behind the scrum. And whilst uh, Bristol may have all the ball, at the moment it's still nil-nil, and Tom May is loving the battle out there. One, one thing that's interesting as well, Bristol are playing one way. It's fast and it's frenetic. They're not asking any questions of the London Welsh defensive line. Haven't seen a little dink, a chip, a float. Something's got to change sometimes. Free kick. <laughs> well, that is not where Hudson Tongue needed to be as far as Tyson Keats was concerned. And Keats can't put a hand on his opposite number. Baldwin is really quick there and gets it out to short. Two tries last week against Mosley, the former Worcester man. This, though... An altogether different start to a match. Bristol have been getting used to racing into a lead of late. Not tonight. Getting great work at the break down there. Driving over from London Welsh. Here's Keats. Davis. That's some space there. Really clever kick. The firmness of this ground makes it sit up quite nicely for Slowick in the end. What's he trying here? Might have got away with that one. It's fallen to Glynn. Little chip in behind here, but Ajua had read it well. Watkins would have been in had it been hit with a little bit more certainty. It's fallen now for Kerwin. Really starting to break up. <laughs> and defences might be stretched here. Notably Bristol's as Spencer goes forward over halfway. Keats, Tongawe. Well, he got in the way last time and made a bit of a mess of it, but he wanted to make amends and get in the way in a more positive sense. On that occasion, again a little bit of space spotted by Keats. Bristol stops. Slowing. And again, that runs on this hard service. We needed that. That's a very good kick from Algie Slowick because whilst the last minute of play has been quite exciting, it was pretty average, to say the least. People picking bad lines, knock-ons, and Slowick, the youngster, just decides foot on the ball, to use the football metaphor, and that's a super kick. Crowd appreciate it. Brother Lucas in action for the England under-18s. Big weekend for 
the Slowicks. Started quite well, good kick, couple of high balls that he's done well under. Great level of confidence, good to see him play so young. Such a big game. Well taken by Corker. A bit like Rickard Strauss at Leinster, one of the season's good news stories. Matt Corker coming through this heart condition, irregular and fast heartbeat, which has all been sorted now. There he is, towering at the line out. That's good work as well because Glynn's done very well on Bristol's ball and he's got off the ground. Bristol aren't just waiting there, they're competing, but the timing was very good all the way through there from Vela's throwing through to that take. Longest serving player on the London World Staff, currently Matt Corker. Fingertip stuff. Mosses does well to react. Then he came to the Bath Academy. That's Sorensen, one of those who came from New Zealand. This Hall needs help. It comes from Edie, and also Lawrence was there quickly. And Robinson, that's good work by Lestrange, but that's not so good. One they got away with. Lucky American there. Took too long there. He was waiting for that ball to stand up for him. He, I think he was in two minds whether to let it go and take the line out. And by the time he came up with the decision to take the ball, Bristol were on him and the charge down really put him under pressure. Plays fly half for the USA Eagles. Full back for London Welsh. There's Marco Momo, oh, it's come through. And then an important hand in from Hudson Tonga where it's gone forward off that hand, so it's advantage Bristol Cortez. Good strength there from Marco Mama. Also good spatial awareness. Not so good from Watkins. Baldwin's had a good start to the game, but I don't think he just gave enough weight to that little pop pass there. Made it very hard for Watkins. Here's Lestrange, a fly half playing fullback, get rid of it. Takes slightly too long. Never going to get anywhere yeah, let's there. Go, let's go, lads. Let's go. Let's go. Mama. Let's go. We're ready. Very different sort of player to Rennie. Rennie's a real old fashioned seven, very good on the ground. And I must say, I think at the moment, Bristol are missing Rennie significantly. That's Although that's a good run from Mama. But what though. Bristol have got to do is find their technique at the breakdown because the odd run from a back row forward, Second. it looks great on television, but it ain't doing much for the rest of his team at the moment because London Welsh against Andy Robinson, one of the great proponents of back row play, have been dominating this breakdown. Keep the shoulder open for me. Thanks. His son, not so bad either, is he? We saw that last week in Mosley Colours. Ollie, that try he scored last week. I thought I was looking at cover of the old Rothmans, 1989-1990, when uh, Bind. Father Andy Set scored for England against France in that game. Just looked the same. Shouldn't be surprised, should we? Good genetics. Robinson, <laughs> another one. Nicky knocks on. No, seven, and that no. was a tasty response from London Welsh. They do put themselves about, don't they? Even though the knock out had occurred, if you look at the pace that London Welsh put on that, you could see what they're up to. Ryan Jones, who we believe will be available for the semi finals if the Ospreys do not make the Rabo 12 semi-finals and that doesn't look likely at the moment but here's his example again look at London Welsh here just foraging scavenging three four men really up for it the players coming in Ryan Jones Dwayne Peel Matthew Morgan David Lemmy Morgan impressive. No. fine Bristol scrum again release aids to tackle those forwards will be wondering why there's nothing to show for it. Tommy, he's looked strong. The game has been played almost exclusively inside the London Welsh half. Here's Watkins again. There is a gap on the inside. Daniel Brown comes across. One or two cries of high tackle there, but the referee in great position to see it. Waves it on. There's James Hall. 
Back it comes now with Bolwin to Robinson. Robinson trying to step. Mickey Robinson. Crowd desperate now for their side to get these first points. Marco Mull offloads, nearly an interception for Stegman, but he's taken on by Short. Mammer again to Cortez, who's really got those problems sorted out at the scrum, those early issues long gone now. Edie. Baldwin again, out it comes to Robinson. Must there be. could be a man over here. And that man is Watkins again. That takes him out in front. As the leading try scorer in the championship this season. The expectation is massive here. So too the pressure then. And that pressure was certainly building with half an hour of scoreless play. But it's evaporated now with another George Watkins try. Well, for the first time in a while, Bristol have attacked with real pace on their game. And in the end, the combination of that pace, power, and some lovely passing from Mosses was too much. Hudson Tongawea, of all people, was the man who was the first crack as Tuvy goes through him. And Bristol just kept getting quicker and quicker ball. Mosses' pass here is very slick. That's an absolute be beauty because Azua is quite close to that. And if you watch the left wing here, if you don't fizz this pass, the left wing, the Jewel's got a chance here. That's an absolute beauty. You see that one again? That's a touch of class. He started well, Mosses, and it's finished by the man who just can't stop, stop scoring tries. Watkins, once of Dean's Crusaders, not far from here. Is he heading towards the Premiership? There's Jack Tubby too. Next Dings. But it was Tuffy's centre partner, Mosses, who had to find the perfect pass there. The overlap was always on, but it needed the perfect ball. And the inside centre delivered. Here's Nicky Robinson. At last, he gets a chance to kick at goal, and he's missed the conversion. But Bristol do have the try. Scored by that man, Watkins, again. And here it is again. Off the left hand. Also, the timing of the pass. That's what I like. It's not just the quality of the pass itself. He's taken three or four paces, he's brought London Welsh into his web and he has just threaded it. That's a real touch of class from Robinson's inside centre. Davis restarts. Oh, good that chase from a duo. But because of the way they have defended thus far in this match, London Welsh, they're far from out of this. If they can grab something before half time. Could be parity or even better. It is just a start for Bristol, nothing more. But the building pressure as well as points, and I think that's part of the Robinson plan. And I think he believes that with the squad he's had, even in the playoffs, if he can just keep the pace of the game up, in the end, they will overwhelm. Also, building tiredness in the opposition. Because it's just tackle after tackle. And Lawrence takes them on, looks for the big handoff and does well there to hook up. Bolwin, Robinson, Marco Mama. Steps well, doesn't he? Here's Bolwin again. Nicky Robinson, and they're finding the gaps. Lichidi to Bolwin, Robinson switches, finds Marco Mama again, tapped back by Cortez to Nicky Robinson. Here goes Tuffy. Tries to feint and go on the outside of a duo. Lawrence, who started it. The hooker tries to keep it going, it has gone forward now, but some lovely moments here from Bristol. Beginning to win the contact, and it's the big argument that Andy Robertson will have that'll counter the old boys of Greenwood and Barnes by saying, by going to the corner, by applying pressure, we're making London Welsh just tackle and tackle and tackle. And the reason London Welsh are beginning to drop off the big tackles now, Andy will say, is because we've had all the ball, we've maintained the pressure, we've gone to the corner, we haven't slowed the game with a pot at goal that's given them a two minute chance to have a rest. They're just keeping the pace up, the ball in play, it's everything that Barnsley and I are saying shouldn't happen, they are doing. One defeat in their last 17, Fine. Sean Holly and Andy Robinson, Set. and it shows here that London Welsh can drive 
great comfort from their recent record. One defeat in 12, seven wins on the bounce. And they're not going away here. It's very important if London Welsh are to stay in this game. If they're to come to the playoffs and ask a massive question of a team like Bristol, they've got to start to get their hands on this ball, their boots on this ball. They've, start, they've got to control territory, they've got to control possession, and most importantly of all, they've got to control the pace of the game because when the pace goes away from them and it goes to Bristol's way, as Will says, that Bristol are going to overrun any team in this division. Well, they are overrunning the London Welsh scrum here. And Keats trying his best to stay in field. He did that really well, supported by Jura, but that will be a major concern to Justin Vanell and his coaching team. Just stop there, Reds. He's on, that's good. Davis goes long, goes very long, in fact. Try score a Watkins. Try and do the same. Hold three. Stop two. How uh, long is that? Decent kick. Just watching Baldwin. He's a real terrier at scrum half, isn't he? He's got his chance today, and he is taking it. Galvanising the pack, keeping the pace up all the time. They're just Bristol are just going to keep going. Ricky to go, in an ankle brace this week. Don't know how long that is going to be. Obviously, fingers crossed here that it's not a lengthy layoff. Can't afford it now at this stage of the season. Otherwise, that would be it to Puna. But Baldwin doing well to stand in and standing in, trying to make an interception. There was Robinson. Nearly got away because of it. Did brilliantly, to, did brilliantly to hold on to that ball, Nicky Robinson. But that's good work again by London Welsh. Well, it would have been very good legal. Don't think he's as sure about that one. If he goes past the ball, he's off his feet. You go, hang on, so either on the ball or not past it. Sorry. Hey, back in. Hey, here. Pass the ball. Uh, Jeff, got time for the line now? Thanks, just under two minutes. It's interesting, isn't it? Nicky Robinson asking the referee, Luke Pierce, have I got time for the line out? You can see on your screen it says 38 minutes, 25 seconds. So you're thinking, why is he asking? But opposite us, in the stand, the clock is showing 42 minutes, and that's why Robinson is asking the question. Yeah, I got it. OK, thanks. Could be a costly penalty, this one. Yeah. Right on the stroke of half-time. Not straight, the call. And London Welsh will feel that justice is done. It's a fine line. That last breakdown. It's well explained by Luke Pearce. Clear why he made the decision. But you see teams get away with that if they counter-ruck and drive over. Yeah. Other thing I noticed, uh, have we seen? Is that the first not straight? There haven't been many. The throwing in has been very accurate tonight, hasn't it? That's the first one. Yeah, from either side. Now, Bristol scrum has been very powerful. 40 seconds to go. If they can put a steamroller shunt on here, this could really turn the game. Oh, good play. Well played by Brown, the number eight. He knew he had to get off the back very quickly there. Find Stegman and then Keats. Who's going to get no joy down the short side? Nathan Vella does well, the hooker. It's about closing out the half here for London Welsh. They're trapped again, and Davis went for length and got it. Well, it hasn't been perfect from Bristol in their new revolutionary game, but the way they're playing, the pace of it has put in so much okay, pressure on London Welsh, even though the score okay, at the moment is only 5 0. Yeah, you wonder what it's taken out of London Wells just yeah, sustaining this small line. deficit. Yeah. Bristol 5 0 up, but very much, I think, in the ascendancy at the All moment. In All in Welsh. There's a man that's really put himself about in this first half, Rhys Lawrence. Plenty of excellent work at the set piece. Knock on by Blue. Not just his throwing in, but Knock also his. Scrummaging too, but around the park like his colleagues. 
They've been excellent in the build-up, not quite the finishes to show for it, just the one, the uh, George Watkins try. But Mark Sorensen and his side lead by 5-0. It could have been more had they taken those kicks at goal, but that is not the Bristol way. The London Welsh way is to beat teams around them at the top of the table, and they are not out of this match yet, even though they haven't scored a point. Let's go down to Bill. Tom, that defensive effort in the first half, how much has it taken out of you? It's taken a bit more out of me than it probably has others, but uh, no, the boys have done well. You know, we've restricted them to, what, five points. Uh, they've had a lot of ball. We need to get the ball. We need to get some momentum up front. A bit, a bit hit and miss and inconsistent up front. What do you need to do to make sure you get your hands on the ball and keep the ball? Well, I think it's just a bit of discipline and a bit more patience when we get in the right areas. You know, we've had the ball up here two or three times just giving it away, just giving it away lightly. And against a team like Bristol, you know, who like to move the ball, who like to run about, you know, they'll make you pay. So, you know, hopefully the second half we'll get a bit more of a grip on the game and, and, and try to stamp our, our game plans on it. Cheers, Tom. No worries. Well, he is a tough old nut, Tom May. He has got 15 minutes to suck in the big ones and to work out a way for Welsh to get their hands on the ball and turn it around because at the moment it's been a little bit unconventional for Bristol, not only tonight but also this season. However, it's working in that they lead. The concern is that it's probably not working as well as they'd like. It's only by five and this one is very much alive. Comparing very well on, with Jeff. certain clubs in the Premiership. No doubt that Bristol could live alongside type of club. London Welsh recently alongside that type of club with their own ambitions. And they've made one change at the start of the second half. Nathan Trevitt is on. And straight into action. Tom Hold Bristow, six, six, the man six, on six. loan no, from Leicester good. Tigers, is off. Because that was one area. One of quite a few areas that Bristol were on top in the first half, the scrum. Ooh, what a start. Yeah, he's making tackles, making runs. There's Davis. Tuffy was sensing an interception, but Davis had judged it well. And it was Corker. Keats. Richard Thorpe, nice offload, finds Spencer. If London Welsh come out of the blocks quickly here, get the first score, then the game will feel very different. Slow it, ball lost. It needs to go out, and it does, from a Bristol point of view, but good start here from London Welsh. Nice balance, Trevitt made a real difference there. First carry, and he is bang, he's straight through his opposite man. Paul just knocked backwards, and that gives him some momentum. And then Tom May uses his experience. This is very good play here. Thorpe's offload is good, and it's quick ball. And then Tom May thinking, let's not try to overdo it. Nothing on, into the corner, and it puts Bristol under pressure. The knock-on, and London Wells probably have as good an attacking position as they've had in 41 minutes. Stretcher has been called for here. He's damaged his ankle quite badly, so maybe a couple of minutes. Right. Just looking around, who is down? It's Lestrange who's down. And he's hurting. Alex Davis went straight over as soon as the play had stopped. He knew that his fullback was in a spot of bother there, and so does his boss now as well. James Ticknell is preparing to come on. And his former stomping ground, South Yorkshire, is where we are going to tomorrow, of course. Five o'clock, Sky Sports 2 for three against four. Rotherham against Leeds, four against three, to be technically correct. Those two level on 75 points. Rotherham, Leeds, London, Welsh, Bristol, all qualified for the... Playoff semi finals, it's just about sorting out the opposition and the venues. There's James Ticknell, who started the season, might remember in Cornish Pirates colours, scored a classic Mist try, against Mystery Bristol try, didn't he? At Sandy Park on that opening day double header.
course, he's come through serious injury and illness problems after that car crash. A great comeback to professional rugby from him. Played inside centre against London Scottish. He was a wing when he played for the Pirates that day against Bristol at the start of the season. Another player who can float around the back line. I think it's Stegman who will go to full-back. As his full-back is still down there receiving treatment. That's real pace and power, Ticknell adds, but it's a strain... It's a, it's a very sad here for Lestrands because it looks a very nasty injury. Here's the try again. Robinson to his inside centre, just waits the pass, and that's pitch perfect there from Mosses. He's got a lot of try, Watkins, and if all the passes that are coming his way are that good, it's no surprise. Very easy for the right wing there. Certainly a player who looks like he can make the leap from championship to premiership. Nice balance in the centre. We're talking to Andy Robinson, weren't we, at half-time, and he was very pleased with Tovey and Mosses and the, the, the balance they bring to their game. In that centre partnership, the young players, good future. Adam Hughes on the bench for That's Bristol. Of he's been loaned out by the Dragons. He will go back to Wales at the end of the season. So Hughes will be a loss, but in Mosses and Tovey, of course, Luke Eves, he's still contracted and still very much part of the squad. Tovey Lestrange, well, he's not going to be part of this match. I'm just looking at that, I think it's a fairly safe assessment to say that it might well be the end of his season. Having just joined the club, played for the United States in the World Cup qualifier recently against Uruguay. It's Billy Millard, who's now with the States on their coaching team. He used to work, of course, with Justin Bunnell at the Cardiff Blues, who recommended this man. But he's an injured man, sadly. We wish him all the best. Just the way Welsh are lining up here. It does look like Stegman at fullback with Tignall going on to the wing. Adieu was staying in the left wing position. Tignall could, Tignall could cause a lot of problem coming off his wing. He's very dangerous, blind coming in field because he's got great pace and he's a very big, powerful winger. And if London Wales could just hold some space in midfield, he could be a dangerous man. Bind. Set. formerly of Doncaster and Leeds. James Ticknell, of course, the Pirates this season, joining Welsh on, in December. Here's Peter Edwards. Feels like in these only couple of minutes or so in the second half, Welsh have had more possession and more territory than they had in the whole of the first half. Well, that's not quite the case, but... It is a promising start. More good possession, Miles, than in the first half, I think. In the danger zone. There's Will Spencer again, good carry. Advantage. Daniel Brown. Just couldn't hold on to that one. Baldwin's got it now. Advantage over. And Robinson with the kick. Stegman is coming. And there, Ticknell showed how big he is. Keats, out to Davis, Corker, that's the halfway line. Advantage, going for the ninth path. This time it's advantage to London Welsh and Tyson Keats doesn't do a Luke Ball win and go for the quick tap and go. No, no, look, listen, same as when they rolled into your nine, they can't roll into the ninth path. Out of the way. A very good start to the half for Justin Burnell's team. <clears throat> He's a little bit upset with what he presumes to be the cynicism of Bristol there at the breakdown. Now, Davis, does he go for the post? He is. What a contrast. We have one team, he could be 10 metres out in front of the post and they turn it down, and the other, 
inside their own half, going for it. Two ways to play rugby, Miles. Two ways to score points. Well, there's a few more, actually, but you go for tries, you take your penalty shots. We said it would be a game of contrast, and it has never been better exhibited than in this particular moment now, as Davis, who was impeccable off the kicking tee last week, looks to land first point tonight for London Welsh. Half halfway line, but it is in immaculate nick. It is not the pitch I played on a couple of years ago. You could see grass. Amazing. Strikes the ball well, doesn't he, Davis? London Welsh have not lost to another top four side. Been Rotherham twice, Leeds twice, Bristol once. If they could complete the set tonight and come back after the first half that they experienced here at the Memorial Ground, well, what a boost that would be going into those semi-finals but they'll have to wait for their first points just a little bit too far out for Davis who does strike it well but not that well just testing Bristol's nerve a little bit not too much at the moment but Bristol okay no more games in their own 22 for the first time this entire game do they keep playing this way you assume they will That's a good kick-off. Nicky Robinson certainly got the warning there of the uh, referee to get on with it. Tubby, Slowick on to Short. Short strong, so is Ticknell. Robinson comes forward and then drops a little bit back in the pocket. In fact, he's not going to be first receiver here. Leaves it to Mozes, who passes well. We saw that with the try. That's Edie carrying... Over halfway, Robinson again. Went to double figures now with his carries in this game. Mitch Eady, his stats are good. Robinson again to Costa, who bounces off Tinknell, who is getting heavily involved since he entered the fray. Release Penalty first. Bristol, Baldwin is going again. He's slowing. Costa. Didn't show any of the effects after that bounce off, did he? Tubby. Sorensen. Out it goes to Edie. His father, Jim, used to play in goal for Bristol Rovers, who share this ground. The rugby club on their way to Ashton Gate next season, where they hope they will be playing Premiership rugby, home of Bristol City. Oh, that's a good line from Watkins. Good ball as well. Great tackle comes in from Keats. That was Mozart who was going through. This is Costa. Oh, this and is this time. is Hall. Good tackle back from Thorpe. Out it goes again. Can they make it pay again with the extra man? Yes, they can. Bristol run it in with Edie the scorer. Well, his dad didn't score. He was the keeper. But Edie is the try scorer here. Second one of the night, first of the second half, and Bristol's first attack in the second half, having weathered a little bit of a London Welsh storm. That's the best piece of play we've seen from Bristol. Some of the play from forwards was quite brilliant. Hall, the loose head, was giving lovely missed passes, little turn, little balls wide. Look at this from the loose head, lovely passing, keeping width to it. But then when Bristol went wide, they started to cut angles. It's a brilliant tackle from Keats to stop them, first of all. There's a great change of angle there between Robinson and his man. Moss is there again, and then Mark Sorensen, second row involved. Costa again with Hall, just looking for the angles. Watch this pass from a second row forward. Bang, straight into the money. Beautiful pass. Talked to Andy Robinson on Monday, and he said he wanted all his players to be competent at the basic skills of running lines and passing. That try, I felt, was a great example of what Bristol are trying to do. That's a very good try. Talked about those carries. Now he's going to try to go alongside that carrying stat. Watkins try, Edie try. But in many ways, the tries also belong to Mosses and Sorensen. The passes of the ball. Nicky Robinson stays that side of the post with his conversion. So... 
They are, it seems, going to have to do it with tries. Here's that pass from Sorensen. A little bit like Moss's in the first half. And it was a scoring pass. Some super rugby there, I, I must say. Hall, I felt. Two, three involvements for a loose head prop. You know it's a good try when you get props carrying like that, passing like that. Super play from Bristol. And it all started from a, a 22 restart from Nicky Robinson that Bristol regained. It didn't end until the try was scored. Chris Cook is on for Tyson Keats. That's a change then at London Welsh at scrum half. Keats did so well to make that tackle back on Mosses. But it's his final act in the game. And Nicky Robinson gets the ball away. Here's Davis. Now it's London Welsh looking for a little bit of pace of their own. There's Stegman. Finds Cook. Chance for Slowick to run the ball away. Well, not for long, but he did really well. Try. And Watkins is off again, and Watkins can really shift. In goes Baldwin. He's been a live wire all night. Played really well. That's a nice service from Mama. On to Edie. Short. And suddenly Bristol have found their mojo again here. Robinson. Costa, that lovely little delay again from him. Lawrence, well played by Glynn. On to Robinson. That's going to be too much that time to take, but no panic from Slowick. Pressure and a little bit of panic maybe from Cook as Bristol turn up the heat once more. Well, Watkins gets that wrong. There's a real chance here. Watkins is run that takes his team that way. He shouldn't be doing that. The run has to do this to fix his man because on the left hand, on the right hand side, there's a clear run in. Stepped in field, he fixes his man. There's a try in the right hand corner as there was two minutes earlier. Lawrence throws, taken by Glynn. I think the memorial ground crowd would like a forward effort here. I think they might like a try for a win the most. I don't know. It's a tradition. And Edie goes first of all. Baldwin. Well he's not going to do it on his own from there. He's leveled. What do you reckon? Because of that he might not be able to take the tap. Do you go 13 nil up? <laughs> I don't think so. But having said that, I don't think you go for the line out in the corner either here. Your scrum's on top. Decision, please. Cool. Neither. Robinson off to Costa. London Welsh almost caught napping there. Assuming maybe that Bristol were going to go for the corner. But they responded in sufficient numbers. And again, the London Welsh defence does really well. Rhys Lawrence to... lost that one when he really did need to control it. It was a little fake there, the discussion. I think Nicky Robinson always knew what he was doing. Quick ball now, the hooker's coming hard on the angle. It's a great line, but he just loses control of the ball in the tackle there. Off the line very well. Big pressure on the hooker and he couldn't quite hold on to it there. Wait, my turn, okay? And all the worse for the Bristol supporters because Cook is born in Bath and is ex Bath. Man who made that tackle. No, no, Under Welsh there, you can see the pressure looking to get into their drive. Hey, well, hang on. I'll make sure they don't go early, but you must also absorb that hit, okay? Reds, I'll make sure they absorb it, but don't chase. Yeah, right? They were on the edge of going early there, Welsh. OK. Thanks very much. <laughs> They're on the edge of going out, I think, here, or going out tonight. I think if Bristol score one more try, they've had five minutes in 53, London Welsh. And Bristol, they're only 10 nil up, but they really have Boy. been pummeling them and they're starting to find Sucks. some rhythm as well, I feel. Now, this is the one the Bristol supporters would love to drive London Welsh off this ball over their own line. I think they might have done it. Advantage the knock on. Well, they've driven them off the ball. The over the line bit still has to come, but it might come now as 
Edie goes forward. Can he get that ball back to Baldwin? Forwards piling in. Baldwin trying to dig it out. Robinson. Oh, that's a stat. That's a score from Mosses. It's the last Friday night game at the Memorial. And Bristol want to exit on a high. It looks as if they're going to do it. Bruising treatment from the Bristol forwards to just smash London Welsh's pack backwards. And it's the Welsh's pack that's been the foundations of their season to date. Bristol are taking them in that area of strength. Tom May's talking and they mustn't capitulate now. Bristol could really inflict some psychological damage. London Welsh, so they go for the hook. As soon as the foot goes up, Bristol get the drive on. It comes out. Mosses, the creator for the first try, benefits from a very flat Nicky Robinson. Bang. Lovely step again. Just balanced on the feet, off the left to create the spot. There's your little step. He's through. Not the greatest tackle from Hudson Tongawea, who does not look 100% fit, but that's a super try. Forged by the pack, finished by Mosses. And Robinson with a conversion, Yarn Evans. Well, I'm right by the uh, by the Bristol bench, Miles, and they're buoyant here. They can see evidence of Bristol superiority now, very evident on the scoreboard. You know, that, that variety, so one thing to have a very positive philosophy, very high tempo philosophy, but there can still be a variety in the way you play. And Barnsley touched on it, you know, changes of angles from the forwards, quick feet as well, variety of passing, short passing, long passing, on the top of a dominant pack as well. And what we're going to see now is a Bristol team really wanting to stamp their foot down all over London Inside Welsh Bristol. and make big forwards. points, Good. big psychological blows over the next 25 minutes or so. London Welsh, you could see from the reaction Stuart was saying, Tom Red May stop, come out of the ten. telling come his in. team not to capitulate <laughs> now. It's not all over tonight for London Welsh by any stretch of the imagination, but if Bristol get rampant from here on in, then it has to have an effect in some way if these two were to meet again at a later stage. And I'll tell you one thing, Miles. The way it's going at the moment, Bristol will be going into the playoffs, tapping and going and kicking to the corners. Advantage two playing now for ball. Tonga where to Cook. Davis. Cross goes Slowick. The referee's pulling them back for... Penalty Number two, London taking Welsh. men off the ball over here. Infringement by Reese Lawrence. Thanks. Number two, tackling a man off the ball. Your side, Omar. Was confessed, didn't see it at the time. Refereed it. Number two. I think Tom May showed the importance of experience there. Six. This game may well have been gone, but we said before the match. You're not going to get promoted to the Premiership tonight, and you're not going to miss your chance. But if London Welsh were to lose by 30-odd points, the significance psychologically would be so much. It would be a lift for Bristol, it would be a blow for London Welsh. So, Welsh don't have to win this game from here, but they've got to hang on in there now, and I think that's what, to, uh, that's what Tom May was telling his team. That's without a shadow of a doubt. A character test here. London Welsh are all about having their character tested, both in this league but also the Aviva Premiership. As Vela throws. It had been such a promising start to the second half from London Welsh. But Edie and Mosses with these tries in the second half, creating a 17 mil gap now. Okay, that's one time. There's Kerwin. Costa's been good, hasn't he? Great defence, a complete performance. Off his feet there, though. London Welsh trying to point that out to the referee. That was made to Brown. Two of the more experienced players. Need to come to the fore here. Hold on. I'm sure they will. The Dewar. This time looking for explosive power of a standing start, and we saw it there. And Kerwin goes on, no, trying to get the ball back to a Dewar again. Just seeing what he can do. Costa comes through once more. 
London Welsh as close as that. Luke Pearce is checking, but use it. now the call is use it. Corker. That was Edwards. This is Cook. Now it's Davis, and then Stegman is stopped. And that Bristol defence, and there's been one or two question marks over it of late. Looking like a London Welsh defence there. What we saw in that first half, they smashed into those tackles. In a funny sort of way, Andy Robinson and Sean Holly will be as pleased with that as they have been with the tries that have been scored. Uh, oh, more so, no doubt at all about that. Bristol have been leaking too many tries too late in the game. And in a home Listen, and away semi final we'll playoff or a play. final. You don't tell me what to check and not to check, okay? That's that it. could be costly. That's really interesting then. Luke Pierce was just telling uh, one of the Bristol players, I think it was Sorensen, please don't tell me what to check and what not to check. There is far too much of that in the game at the moment. Nigel Owens made a point play, a week and a half ago in the rugby club TMO just saying well. he would like to see almost one call for a team. So that a captain can't keep saying he did this, he did that, line, he cheated. Yeah, of course. Chipfield is holding before the subs. Will Spence is going off. His second game for the club. He was at the uh, other yes. end of the appearance okay. scale to Matt Corker, his second row partner. And Corker has a new partner now. Is that man Ben West, former Newbury, Cinderford, and prospect. And Robinson, that's a lovely pass again from him to find Tubby. Takes on Hudson Tongawe, who's using these minutes to get back to match fitness and sharpness. Foot in from Kerwin. Watkins again doing the sweeping up this time. Baldwin, Sorensen, Lawrence. Put back a long way there. The hooker, Michidi. Ryan Jones coming to the club, where he's going to have a contest, even Ryan Jones for number eight, if that's the shirt that he wants to wear, Mitch Eady. Six. Six. Jones can play Making eight, he can play six, he can play second row. Sorry, sir, I don't right. think I made this. I, I thought he did that. Okay. <laughs> All right, sorry. Why don't you... No worries. Good base leg boy, Ryan Jones. Eh? That's Robinson to touch, another international with Wales. 32 years of age now, and he has been striding through this league. Yep, cheers. Great news for Bristol, is he? Undoubtedly, as well. When it's a little bit soft, it's a little bit tacky. Nicky Robinson's not at his best, but on these grounds, he's really striding over it, going really well. Looking very comfortable in his game at the moment, but he's getting quick ball. Some nice centres, it's looking good in the middle. There's Baldwin and Mosses. Back to Baldwin. Baldwin played really well, so much so that even someone like Tapuna has not been missed. It's Marco Mama. There's Robinson. No. And Costa. Certainly haven't tired of seeing his intelligent play tonight, Nick Costa. And there's Watkins. Ball win again. James Hall nicely back to Robinson. This is Glenn. Glenn's a big man when he gets going. Man of the match last week against Mosley. This is Robinson again. Such a contrast for Glenn to this time last year when he was injured. The month of March and missed the rest of the season. Now he looks like he's going to be part of Bristol's attempt to storm the Premiership oh. again. And there's Short, Short trying to storm that London Welsh line. Back to Baldwin. There are plenty of blue shirts in that corner again. Mosses doesn't need them. Ball was down. Andy Robinson smiles. Well, Moss has made one in the first half. He's scored two now in this second half. The whole season is coming down to this month and next now. And Bristol look in excellent shape. Uh, the blowing London Welsh away now. And I must say, 
The forward's contribution is huge at the moment. The awareness of space is superb. I talked in the last try about James Hall. His awareness of space and how to fix people, absolutely superb. Holding people there, keeping the move going, and as the move goes on, Costa, another man whose name is on the lip all the time, watch the line here and the support. Carries two men in the tackle, there's the little offload, it's a strong offload to Short, and then Mosses, the creator in the first half, he's benefiting from the finesse of the piano shifters. It's a strong finish by the centre, but there's some lovely little interplay from the, from the Bristol forwards here. Another very good try. These are the kicks that Bristol wanted. Conversions. Four more tries, another bonus point then. Robinson can't get the extra two, but it's all Bristol now, yeah. Yeah, a contrast here in the field, of, and a very sobering contrast for, for Bristol, uh, for, for Ronald Welsh, rather. Bristol went through a very solid defensive set on their own line. Something's been criticised been levied them throughout this season, not going through defensive sets often enough. Yet, on the other hand, when, uh, when put in their own territory, deep in their own territory, Lennon Welsh are starting to fall off tackles, and that makes it a lot easier for the big runners from Bristol to make hay. Yeah, I think London Irish, London Welsh have fallen off now because they are tired. If there's only, if there's one flip side for Bristol, it's Nicky Robinson's goal kicking, Take but he's not getting any room. kicking practice with them going always quickly or for the corner. It's a more. Going to get a scrum, and they're going to be two new members of the scrum for, well, it's only in the front row, but three overall for London Welsh. John Quill is on in the back row. The United States international, but Ty Griffiths and Nathan Morris are now part of the front row alongside uh, Nathan Trevitt, who came on at the start of the half. Just hang on, just hang on, just stay up, stay up. You can see now the banks have burst, haven't they? London Welsh defended so bravely in the first half, just the one solitary try in the 32nd minute, but suddenly now, with Bristol using the width of the field and just fixing men in the middle from 1 to 15, it's looking like a long last 15 minutes or so for London Welsh. Awful lot of Nathans in the uh, London Welsh side tonight. Now coached by Darren, Darren Crompton, the former Bristol man, London Welsh scrum coach. Welsh have a penalty here, and it's their turn to go for the corner for more pressing reasons. Well, there's the top of the table, another bonus point for Bristol. They will be confirmed as the number one seeds with victory here tonight. Leeds and Rotherham play tomorrow, you can see that game live on Sky Sports. And on the, on the basis of this game, it's not a question, I think, at the yeah, moment of who... Bristol would rather face, it was who would rather not face Bristol, they looking strong, Rotherham have played some lovely rugby with the ball in hand, but I think defensively, yeah, Bristol are going to ask them an awful lot of questions, if it is to be Rotherham. <laughs> Robinson, so trusting in his ability, always happy to go as wide as is required, and there was Tuvy again, Baldwin Robinson, up comes Glynn. He's a big man, but he's got a tremendous work rate. Stegman at the second attempt. Keep coming, right, keep walking, Welsh! Scored a try between these two in the November meeting, which went London Welsh's way. Not going offside. Mistake there from Bristol, leads to an offside. Yeah, that game yeah. at the Kazam Stadium, 22-7, I was just going through the personnel today. I think Bristol only had four of today's team play. And I don't think London, London Walsh had more than six. A real turnover of talent. Well, both sides have done it week in, week out. Mm. Massive changes from one game to another to keep everybody fresh for this, what really matters. Tonight, Bristol have... Resisted the bench. London Welsh no, no, have emptied stop, theirs. Stop, 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 stop. It's one of our Nathans. Morris throwing five, in, but the referee. Five through. If you cross the gap again, it'll be a free kick. 
Well, that's great news for Bristol when you've got your entire bench there. Players like Ben Skirvin with experience coming off the scrum if London Wales do get back into it. Hobson to come on. Hughes is a very interesting player. But the main thing is, it's not the faces you're looking at, it's the legs you can't see. 14 fresh ones. And it's a statement in itself, the fact that Bristol have kept these players out there, the starting 15. We're about to go into the final 10 minutes of this match. It was Tonga Weir. And it's Ben West, now it's Cook. And Davis to Tom May. May cutting back. Seen him do that so many times over the years. More often than not in Newcastle colours. And it's Ticknell trying to get away. Ticknell, he's a hard man to put down. Eventually, Bristol do that. Cook again. No. Now, have London Welsh worked a little bit of space here? There's Nathan Morris. Quick clear out here, and it could be on, but Bristol have realigned very well. Richard Thorpe saw that, so he straightened up and carried through the one existing gap. A little pass from Trevitt to Quill. Again, Luke Pearce is forced to take a very close look, and he might have to have another look. He does, to give the try to London Welsh. The spirit and the character that they needed to show. He's given the try. And there it was, scored by the former Bath man, Chris Cook. <laughs> And a lot of credit to Luke Pearce. So often we've seen the interminable delay as we go to check with the TMO. Okay, Jeff Warren, we've got one of the best in the business. But Luke Pearce didn't need him. Why? Because he gets a great position. Lovely little pass there from Cook. Tignall's strength again. So London Welsh, a little act of defiance there. It did get some quick ball in the way in the Bristol defence that has been pretty solid on the few occasions it has been tested, finally found want in there. It was a super line from Thorpe that actually got them beyond the line, and they're hit. here's Cook. Cor, do you know what? He's in a great position. <laughs> Can place it first time, but... In the end, he was in a great position. I'm not sure that was on the line there. Now, I'm not going to kill a referee for having the courage of his convictions after what's gone on in the last month. If they do it all the time, Miles, they'll get it more right than wrong. Not sure come the semi-final, final stage. Clubs would quite see it like that. They want the right decisions. But we get the wrong decisions with TMOs anyway sometimes, so, you know, we do. TMOs are human beings as well, Mars. You know, it's a subjective opinion. Well, I take your point, but there is a quest for accuracy in the games that matter, and in all games, really, but you know what I mean, when lifelines and livelihoods are on the line. So Costa goes, and the aforementioned and inexperienced Ben Skirling, ex of Saracens and Bath, comes on. Excellent performance from Nick Costa. Being told he carried 13 times, he made six tackles, but what I liked about his game was his spatial awareness, his offloading, and the way he brought other people into the game. Looked a classy act. That score has done for Welsh here. It's given them a chance yeah. to maybe get another and say, look, if this was a two-legged affair, yeah, and build done, a bit yeah. of confidence from that. Bristol might say, OK, well, in the two-legged affair, we'll kick our penalty goals and you will be anywhere near us. But London Welsh need something to grab onto here, and they have just given themselves a glimmer of hope on the night and a chance to move forward from that hope with that Cook score. It's so interesting because Welsh would then say, yeah, you kick your goals and we won't be as tired as we were and we won't concede that flurry of tries. It's fascinating, isn't it? It is, and it will lead to all the talk as we move into the semi-finals and the final. Which is great, which is what the Championship wants. It's building to some finish this season. 
And Leeds Ready, and Rotherham, right. let's not forget, are not out of this by any stretch of the imagination. They proved that no. time and again this season. What they can do, they play tomorrow and would love to bloody a nose over two legs in a semi-final against these two. Here's Robinson. That's Moss as again he does the right thing. Mama's ball inside to Nicky Robinson doesn't quite work. Back goes Tuvi, watches the bounce well. That's a little chip from Watkins. And Davis knew it was going to come at him there. Good hands from Corker, and then also from Quill. And here go London Welsh again with Stegman. And he's got on the outside of Stegman. Looking for support, maybe. It comes from Ajua. It's going to be another London Welsh score. And it does put a different complexion on this. And they do relish the games against the other members of the Big Four in the Championship this season. And we're seeing that now as this game reaches its conclusion. There is spirit and character that we talked about, but also a belief that they can come out of this. And a touch of class. You know, I think Andy Robinson talked before about the danger of the back three, and there we saw it, Stegman. Brilliant, he left Nicky Robinson for dead, weaves his way through, very clever running lines there, and Azua tracked very well, but Stegman there, his running with the ball in hand was superb, he just bided his time, he let his left wing get to him, that's a classy score there from London Welsh's counter-attack in back three. Well, Bristol have got to that all-important mark of 22, beyond the three tries, three conversions. There aren't many games of rugby are won by sides who come down, come back from a deficit of 21 points. And it's very unlikely that London Welsh are going to go on and win this game, but they are changing the feel of the night. And maybe, just maybe, the feel of the final, should these two meet in it. Mama was the man first beaten, Nicky Robinson the second one, but then a classy piece of paper from Stegman just to bide his time and make it easy for Azure. Super try. Okay. Now Bristol Thanks, are sir. making changes. Moss is one of the players of the night. <laughs> Leaves the field. Not quite feeling as good as he was ten minutes ago. McAnally on as well for Lawrence. Stuart McAnally. And he's come from Edinburgh until the end of the season. Callum Braley at scrum half for Baldwin. There you go London Welsh again. What a strong finish this is turning into. It's Hughes who's come on for Mosses, of course. Straight swap there in the centre. There's a fight off the ball, actually, and some punches raining in. Thought was involved. Jason Hobson, who's only just come on, he was on the floor. And there was another London Welsh player on the scene, had one eye on that and one eye on the uh, live play, but the fight itself yeah. was very alive. Hey, away, Welsh. And the We're referee will away. want walk away. Jeff Warren to have a look at that if we've got pictures of it. Walk away, please. Hey, 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 hey. Walk away, walk away. Time is off. Just give some space. Time is off anyway. A feisty end to the affair. Yeah, well, a reaction from Bristol leaking that try Jeff, gonna, and defiance in from London Welsh. Have you got anything before I go to Jeff? Yes, I punched his thrown by 18 red. Yeah. But I didn't see what the reaction was for. Fine, okay. So for the punches, are we talking punches to the face or? The player who was lying face down on the floor. I did not see where they connected. Fine, okay. Jeff? That's yeah, Phil that Waters who. Okay, can you report on the foul play that you've seen here, please? Gave his view. Report on the foul play. Please stand by. Cheers. Jeff Warren to have a closer look. I'll find out for you. I'll find out for you after. The referee's got no chance. He was away with the ball on the far side. There, he's got his back to it. He could see an elbow just going up and down on the ground. There, a couple of blokes wrestling on the floor. We need to be tighter. There's your right hand going in. Six. Thorpe, Richard Thorpe, and that is persistent. Away. Thank you. That's that's very possibly red. Yes, Kai Griffiths was involved, yeah, but it was Thorpe who was really landing the blows there. 
And his anger seems to have continued beyond that moment. Yeah, when they're standing, it's all over. It's what's happening on the floor is the key to this. One, two, three, four, five. I'll find, I'll find That's out. red. It has to be red, even if he's not com connected there. That has to be red. Said it was competitive in the London Welsh back row, but it might not be quite so competitive now for Richard Thorpe. Luke, yeah, on the back ahead, of this. Richard. There was uh, five punches thrown to by six red, thrown to the head of the blue player on the ground. OK, it was confirmed in six red, punches to the head. Anything else, Word? No, as so, I stood up, nothing else. So number six red, what are you telling me, Jeff, is a red card? That's what I'm telling you. OK, There's number six no and captain, option. please. Thorpe has to go. Not sure what sparked it, but that is not irrelevant. But in terms of his punishment, then there is only one. Okay, the report I've had is that you're punching a man on the floor to the face. Okay, so that's a red card. He knew. We've only got a couple of minutes left. He had spent the okay, last minute or so looking like a condemned man. Jeff, can you just tell me where he knew it snapped. And the former Leicester London Irish man, and all that experience, goes out of this game, but possibly out of the season as well. Jeff, you got me. That is for yes, others to decide. Thanks, mate. And whatever sparks it, that just cannot be the reaction. Trying to establish this too close an angle at the moment. Okay, no, no problem. No, it's a pot loss moment, isn't it? They're penalty Bristol, but I want to find out where it is. So I'm going to take a quick one. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Just want to see where it is. Is that fair? Yeah. Penal penalty, but. Now we're going to now. the genesis of the fight. possible as a Bristol throw, player has thrown a punch from the floor it is very hard to tell but the only point there is the reaction was just Hello. exaggerated yeah so about here Jeff is it yes. lovely thank you time on please mate punches yeah you going for goal because T's on well Thorpe's action made it very simple for yeah, the officials yeah, yeah. in the end just well, that's the ugly team, side man. of this game and, and London Welsh. But the, the flip side, Stegman, the beauty of Thank this, you. what I want you to look at, Stegman Thanks, is Roger. on his own there, and look how far away the eventual try score is. And that means that this yeah, guy console. carrying the ball, Seb Stegman, has got to buy time. <laughs> he steps in, but now watch what he does. In, out, check. Absolutely superbly done. A Dewar's um, line is superb. Bristol. Have going a for goal. change of plan here. They are kicking the penalty goal. Reaction to the two London Wells tries. And Robinson, to his credit, has not been in that frame of mind. He's a very good kick, of course, we know that, year after year. But he slots right into the correct mental approach for that kick. 25-14, extra man, very little time to take advantage of that. Knock on advantage. But it just makes that score look a little bit better, better yeah. for Bristol. And that's all because of the psychological games these two are playing. Is Brayley, Robbins, Tubby. Just about to say he's done really well tonight, and he has. That's not going to change that view, but that's a mistake from Tubby. Slicing. You've changed the ball. It's a line out now. You passed the ball. Now a line out. And the chance for a quick one has gone from London Welsh okay. as they 
pass the ball between themselves. Number five, please. A man of the Number match five, time. A big word for James Hall, the loose head, who's been brilliant. But Nick Costa, I think, was hugely influential from the blind side. But my man of the match, Ben Mosses, created one in the first half with a gorgeous pass. Lovely step for his first try, power for the second. Did very little wrong. Ben Mosses is my Green King IPA man of the match. Cheers, Matt. Final minute, London Wells trying to snatch something here. Snatch some self-belief, I think. They've got a penalty, key. and here's Cook. And he's got the offload into Trevitt, and now it's Davis. Davis, a Jewer. <laughs> Diving in comes short. <laughs> Rather dramatically in, but it needed doing, and then... Everyone's on side, Kerwin nearly with a charge down. Touched in flight, so here's May. Trevor again, his hands, his contribution have been good in this second half, but Bristol in there. Penalty given. Will stem from Slowick getting charged down. He should have passed to Nicky Robinson. He didn't. A little bit of inexperience from the fullback kept the pressure on. Well, she'll run this now, final play of the game. Cook to Trevitt. Little mini battle here between the two teams. An extra game in added time as Bristol try and hold out. 25-14 looks and feels a whole lot better than 25-21. We're not in the two-legged scenario yet, but it's as if we are. Sure, that's the way the players are thinking too. Ajua, good step again from Ajua. He really is a threat. And if Bristol meet him again, they will somehow have to tether him. There's Kerwin. All London Welsh here at the finish. Hudson Tongoya. <laughs> Bristol fans for their final Friday night here. It was not the final game at this ground. Just trying to lift their side for one last defensive effort. There's Kerwin again. Advantage, prop slowing it down. And another penalty coming London Welsh's way. Remember, they're a man down here. May, inside ball, found Stakeman. Davis back to May, a Jew was on the outside. May, again stepping inside, helped out by Tignall. A Jewer, and he's going to have to do this himself, oh. but it's not to say he can't do it. A Jewer's going, a Jewer for the corner, he scored again. London Welsh do grab that extra tie, try in extra time. Well, what a finish from them. What a finish from Azua as well. That was a wonderful step there off his left foot. And again, London Welsh, they've been pummeled for an hour or so, but Bristol, the old worry about not being able to keep the defence up for 80 has come back to haunt them. This left wing finishes superbly here. Great inside ball, bit of Bristol's own medicine. But Bristol have fallen off. It's happened game after game this season, and London Welsh leads and rather look at that step. That is an absolute beauty, but it's a couple of missed tackles afterwards, and Bristol have not sorted out the problem of how do we defend for 80 minutes, and it could yet hurt them for all the excellence of much of their game between 40th and 60 minutes. This game has finished with a very different complexion. Really has, and if they are to come here in May, there are some better memories now for London Welsh. They have this conversion to get in the 20s as well. Can Davis do it? His beloved Liverpool Football Club are going for something special. His beloved London Welsh are going for something special. And 25-21 in a two-legged scenario with a game back at the Kassam Stadium would do London Welsh very nicely. Thank you very much.